Happy holidays and welcome into this edition of ACAP today for the week of Christmas, the week leading into Christmas, the week that begins December 20th, 2021. I'm Jason Parent with the Aroostook County Action Program. On this special edition of ACAP today, we're going to look ahead to the year 2022, which just happens to be the uh, 50th anniversary of the Aroostook County Action Program. Uh, looking forward to that conversation with members of our senior leadership team here at the agency uh, that include Jamie Chandler, Sherry Locke, Alyssa Levac, and Wanda Osgood. We're going to talk about all things 2022 and what we're hopeful about uh, for the coming year. And, uh, and one of those things is certainly celebrating our 50th anniversary with all of you. Before we get into that conversation uh, with our four ACAP leaders, we're going to first turn, as we do at each point in the broadcast, the news and information that you can use, again, for this week of December 20, 2021. And we begin uh, with this, uh, the ACAP a step parenting class is once again uh, coming to you in 2022. Uh, this is a very popular class that's hosted by our own Julia Masick, who's a licensed clinical social worker. Uh, she leads these classes. There are uh, seven sessions that will range from 60 to 90 minutes a week. They're held weekly. Um, and uh, step parenting stands for systematic training for effective parenting. It's a special curriculum that includes such things as understanding young children, their behavior, helping to build self-esteem in the early years and listening and talking to your children, along with a variety of other topics that are available through the STEP Parenting class. It's a great supportive environment, and we certainly encourage all who are interested in becoming better parents, even if you're not a parent yet and are looking uh, to become a parent, this is a great foundational class for you. Uh, please do give Julia a call at 768-0270. Or you can email her at jmasek at acap-me.org, or you can just call ACAP's main number and ask about the step parenting class, and we'll connect you with Julia. Um, but I, again, a great class and a great opportunity, uh, and it's of no charge to members of our community, so we encourage you to take advantage of this offering. Uh, and if you call up Julia, she'll give you specific information about the dates the course will be held uh, and all of the other pertinent information that you need to connect with this class. We move on now to, again, talk about COVID-19 in our community. We start with this, a reminder that if you have not been vaccinated yet or have not received your booster and are eligible to receive your booster, please do consider getting vaccinated. Uh, there are several resources in and around you to get vaccinated. Among them is the main.gov slash COVID-19 slash vaccines, which will give you a, a, a way to find where the nearest appointments are to you in the state. If you have, for whatever reason, difficulty navigating that site or una are unable to get online to be able to navigate it, just give us a call here at ACAP at 764-3721, and we would be glad to help you uh, find an appointment. We'll do the work online for you and help you connect with that appointment uh, and, and even get it scheduled for you if need be. Uh, there are some walk-in opportunities happening uh, as well, so keep your eyes peeled for those. We also want to remind folks that if you are looking for a free ride to get your vaccine, you can do that as well. Don't let transportation be an impediment for you. Uh, the Department of Health and Human Services is offering that free option. They ask just that you give a 48-hour advance notice for that. The information is there on your screen about how to connect with that and that toll-free number there on your screen. We are also in this particular time really trying to impress upon folks the importance of wearing the mask with the high transmission rate in Aroostook County. Uh, just recently, Aroostook County had the sixth highest number of new cases of COVID-19 per capita in the country in this county. Um, and so one of the ways to prevent that transmission is to wear a mask um, indoors in areas of high transmission, which Aroostook County is at this time. Uh, and we encourage you to do uh, just that. So please do consider wearing your mask for your health and for the health, safety, and well-being of others in our community that you interact with. And lastly, as it relates to COVID-19, we again remind our community, if you are asked to isolate or quarantine, there are supports available through you, for you through this agency. Uh, those include uh, grocery and meal deliveries, uh, shelter assistance to help people stay at home, um, and other services that are available through the uh, COVID-19 community supports that we are able to provide uh, in partnership with the Department of Health and Human Services. We have coaches and others across Aroostook County that are available to do these uh, drop-offs of items and things like that very safely to your home, we encourage you to give us a call, 764-3721, or you can go right online and complete the application. It's uh, main.gov slash DHHS slash COVID-19-referral-form, 
uh, and just go to the, just actually key it in, Google it in, and it'll take you right there. I tried it the other day, and it's certainly uh, something that uh, is available to all folks in the state of Maine. This is not an income eligible thing. It costs you nothing, and neither do the materials that are provided to you. So the groceries are provided at no charge to you. Uh, consider using and taking advantage of this service if you need it at any point uh, throughout this coming winter. We also are reminding folks of our community cupboard that is outside of our 771 Main Street Presque Isle uh, facility and near Walmart. Uh, in addition to that one, there are several other community cupboards that have popped up across Aroostook County that are really quite frankly organic community efforts that are supported by the local communities. We continue to look for sponsors for the one outside of our 771 Main Street facility. It's a very heavily used cupboard, and we are blessed with the generosity of many community members who drop off non-perishable food items in the cupboard. But as we head into the winter season, it's always helpful for us to be able to purchase uh, items that will not freeze that can go in that cupboard. So we encourage you to please contact Sherry Locke, our Director of Advancement, if you think that you might be able to um, sponsor, whether you're a business, an organization, or an individual, and would like to sponsor our community cupboard for a month. There are different ways to do that. You can do that, of course, financially. A $500 contribution will allow us to stock the cupboard for the most part for the month or you or your organization can adopt the cupboard and um, religiously stock it, if you will, throughout the entire month. So there are ways that you can connect and ways that you can support. And we encourage you to reach out to Sherry if you'd like to be a, of assistance uh, with us uh, on that point. Right next to our community cupboard at our 771 Main Street uh, building in Presque Isle is our community closet. And as you can see from this picture here, uh, the community closet is often stocked with winter clothing, especially at this time of year, to help people uh, stay out of the elements or stay warm in the elements. If you have items that you'd like to donate, we, we, expect, we accept clothing donations of all kinds. Um, but we certainly have a lot of clothing right now, and we encourage people to please uh, take what you need uh, from this cupboard. Uh, there are opportunities there to connect also with some additional clothing on the inside if you are visiting our office during our regular opening hours as we try to continue to put clothing out into the community closet uh, to make sure that it stays well stocked throughout the season. But again, this, like the community cupboard, is on the give what you can, take what you need concept. So we certainly encourage you, if you are in need of a winter coat or any other clothing at this point, to please visit our community closet right near our community cupboard out in front of our 771 Main Street Presque Isle office location. Emergency rental assistance continues to be available as we head into the new year. Uh, it is basically allowable for any uh, families or households that meet the income eligibility limits. Obviously, folks have had their income tested with the higher price of things and more recently inflation uh, and have financial difficulty that they can certainly claim. If you meet the income eligibility guidelines uh, for this program, you in effect qualify if you are a renter and meet the income eligibility guidelines. So please do reach out to our team or you can fill out an application directly online at mainhousing.org slash COVID rent or just look up Maine Rental Assistance on Google on the internet and it'll take you to the application. Note that you are in Aroostook County and that application will be sent through to ACAP and we will process it and get back in touch with you and your landlord to take next steps. The Home Energy Assistance Program, as our days and nights get colder, as we head into the winter season here in Aroostook County, we remind folks that if you have applied in the past, or even if you have not applied in the past, but haven't received a benefit because you were slightly over income, it really is worth your while to book an appointment for this season because income qualification guidelines have changed. In the last three years, they've changed significantly and they changed a little from last year to this year. You can see the income eligibility guidelines there on your screen. What's especially important to note is that if you have had a change in your income just within the last month, uh, you would certainly want to apply if your income has gone down and you feel that it is under the threshold size of under one month, because we can at this time just do a one month look back uh, during the period of time uh, for the uh, HEAP program. Uh, so please do consider uh, encouraging your friends and neighbors who might need assistance in this regard to apply as well. Cost of heating looks like it's going to be high this winter and we wanna help as many people as possible with this program. And as we head into the uh, winter season further, we remind you that um, the next uh, week or few weeks here is still open enrollment through the 15th of January for the newcovermegovernor 
affordable health coverage in Maine. It's the replacement for the federal insurance marketplace under the Affordable Care Act. Uh, this is the state's uh, plan uh, and an opportunity for you to connect with uh, Andrea White, who is our healthcare navigation assister. Uh, Andrea White can help you look at different plan, different options, um, and connect you with the one that works best for you. They can also help through this process to determine if you might be main care eligible, uh, as this site can certainly help uh, determine that as well. We encourage you to reach out. Again, uh, the, the date has passed for your coverage to begin on, on January 1st. That was December 15th that you needed to be in the system, but open enrollment does continue until January 15th, and we encourage you Either if you have a health plan that you find is expensive that you got through the previous open enrollment period for the uh, federal marketplace to, to revisit this because there might be a better plan, a more affordable plan out there for you under this new health uh, insurance marketplace for the state of Maine, CoverMe.gov. And lastly, if you are in need of any assistance at all, and it's not something that we've talked about or just need further guidance, we encourage you to reach out to us. We have ACAP navigators that are available to assist you. They can connect you with various services within our agency and even help refer you to services outside of our agency. Uh, at this time, as we head into the holiday season, please do not hesitate to reach out if you are in need of any assistance whatsoever. Again, our navigators are a wealth of information and a wonderful resource. And with that, that's this week's news and information that you can use. And as we mentioned at the top of the broadcast, it's now time for our roundtable discussion of what's to come in 2022 for the Arusta County Action Program. Joining me on the program are ACAP's uh, senior leads. Uh, first is Jamie Chandler, who's been a repeat guest on this program. Jamie, it's nice to have you back. Thank you, good to be here. And Sherry Locke, you also returned to the program. It's great to have you back on the program as well. Thanks, Jason. Sherry is our Director of Advancement and also joining us, not familiar faces altogether too often to ACAP today, although I know Alyssa has been a guest in the past, Alyssa Levac, who's our Human Resource Director. Alyssa, welcome. Thanks, Jason. And of course, Wanda Osgood making her, I believe this is your ACAP Today debut, is it not, Wanda? It sure is. Wanda is our Director of Finance and it's great to have all four of you. So Jamie, why don't I start with you because really our service to the community does in fact really begin and end with the programs and services that we offer people and how we connect and members of your team are doing that every day. Um, so in your sort of crystal ball and I know at these, you know, in these past couple of years, if we would have sat down and had this discussion uh, in late 2019 about what was to come in 2020, boy, would we have ever been wrong because of the pandemic. And certainly 2021 has thrown us some curveballs as well. But uh, what can you predictably say may be the case for you and your team in 2022? Sure, so um, in a recent uh, recording of ACAP today, we were talking about our community needs assessment. And so um, really um, the, findings from that community needs assessment really emphasize the work that we do here at ACAP. And so uh, our programming is going to be focused on those key need areas in, in the community. So um, definitely you're going to see opportunities um, for uh, programming in child care and early care and education programs for uh, areas of nutrition, um, we've had a lot of, of discussions as of late around housing and, and what housing looks like here in Aroostook County. And so um, one of the programs that I'm really excited about is our Youth Homeless Program, Demonstration Project Program. And with that, we will actually be um, have staff on the ground doing outreach to uh, young younger individuals who are experiencing housing instability or homelessness and helping to get them connected to resources. Uh, also, um, our, our housing project is, is, uh, is another one of those projects that, that addresses that. We'll also likely see um, in the coming year some um, resources, uh, additional resources to assist with our weatherization work that we are doing and um, really helping those homeowners who um, are experiencing uh, energy burdens, if you will, so that um, they can they can be long uh, be in their homes longer and and be safe and and uh, have some energy efficiency. We're also going to be doing a lot of work um, with our prevention teams. We um, we've done a lot of internal work during COVID, so we haven't been able to get out in the community as much because there haven't been as many community 
events happening. Um, so we've done a lot of internal work with our prevention and health and wellness teams on how we can collaborate and work together to um, really, really pool our resources and and um, meet our, the deliver, deliverables for our programs. And so I'm hopeful that uh, in the coming year, we will be able to get into more community events and, um, and have those teams uh, out in the community doing the work that they do. And certainly all of those are, are potential future topics and likely future topics for discussions here on ACAP today, as many of them have already um, in their sort of infancy stage and early discussion stage. But before we sort of transition over to Sherry and talk about beyond that, our community engagement and our development work in 2022, I just want to circle back with you to just chat a little bit about some of the emergency services and, you know, the basic need services that we're also continuing to provide as we find ourselves in the middle or very start, I should say, of a another Aroostook County winter here and in the holiday season and, and still seeing a lot of folks out there in need. So just want to underscore that those services are still a critical part of our, our infrastructure and our work. Absolutely. So uh, our navigation team, we've actually been able in 2021, we're able to, to uh, grow that team significantly. And so we will uh, continue to have those services in 2022 to help uh, our friends and neighbors get connected to uh, many services that they they may not even know exist and so our team will continue to make sure that people are connected our coaching team it continues to provide supports to individuals um, that have needs that uh, arise and there are no other resources to to assist with them also our hope and prosperity resource center uh, we have staff here every day that are helping to support individuals um, who are homeless or housing insecure in uh, you know, getting their needs met as far as um, access to food, access to employment opportunities, um, job, you know, assisting with job applications, things of that nature. Um, and so I think that, and then of course, um, as, as much as COVID, I, I think everyone is really exhausted as we talk about COVID, but um, those COVID related services and supports will continue into the coming year. The program uh, is likely going to look slightly different than it does today, uh, but ACAP is committed to uh, continuing our service to uh, individuals that have been affected by the COVID-19 pandemic in the next year as well. Absolutely, and we'll keep folks posted on what some of those changes might look like as we learn them and as we look to implement them in our community. Sherry Locke, a lot of what uh, Jamie Chandler was talking about on the programmatic side oftentimes starts in partnership with you and your team on the development side and then also continues um, with you and your team in the community outreach side. And so Jamie talked about all of that and the prospects uh, for 2022. What do you see in your crystal ball? I think 2021 has been an incredible year for us. We've been able to start uh, new emergency services uh, related to the pandemic, but also to expand um, the services that we offer here and have historically offered as an agency. Um, we offer over 40 different programs and services, and all of them are running at full capacity right now. So I see 2022 is the year to continue to grow those programs because the needs continued um, in Aroostook County but also our opportunity, as Jamie mentioned, to take a look at where those gaps are and other places that we can step in and step up um, to make lives better here in Aroostook County. So you're exactly right. I'm in very close contact with Jamie and her team to find out what are those additional resources that we need here in Aroostook County to fill those gaps and what role can they can play? What other partners need to come to the table and what's the best way to approach those projects? So um, really just an exciting year, a building year from last year and the great work that was done and really excited to um, to start putting some of those projects together. Jamie mentioned some of the newer projects with the Youth Homeless Demonstration Project and the housing project that we're working on. So it's really an exciting time for us here at the agency. And Wanda Osgood, when, when Sherry talks about all of those projects, I know that that adds certainly work to your team as it does to Alyssa's team in terms of, of the complexity and the ability for us to be able to offer services to more and more people in our community and in different ways. Um, how is your team number one holding up and what is your outlook for uh, the work that you'll be doing with your team in 2022? Oops, we're, we're, you're muted, Wanda. <laughs> there we go. Of course. Uh, so I'm very blessed to have a very strong finance team. Um, we are growing in every day. We're a fairly young team with the agency. Um, but 
they've they've hit the mark every time sherry comes to their door saying hey i need a budget in two days and they're on it so i i suspect that we will continue meeting those needs and, and supporting programs uh from the back end and um you know when they come to us and say we need we will meet that need every time i'm hoping uh we're going to continue to grow and uh get stronger um and hopefully we'll be able to give some guidance as to forecasting and those types of things that can help us make better decisions. So. Thank you. And speaking of teams, um, Alyssa Levac is the HR director for the organization. You're responsible for the entire team ACAP and you've really done a tremendous amount of work in 2022 to sort of change some, some systems and some practices within the agency. Um, but 2022 is, is right around the corner here and I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing the great things you're gonna do in that year. And, and what are your thoughts about the coming year and Team ACAP? Really exciting um, with our new payroll um, software implemented and HRIS system. We have a lot of capability that will help um, with the bandwidth for our staff and for myself. So providing me the opportunity to be able to be more uh, involved in the recruiting process, I, I look forward to that because um, I think that I can help with creating a stronger process to help recruit um, staff who are really driven and um, understand and want to be a part of uh, the mission of this agency. So it all kind of ties together in that um, there's a lot of work going on behind the scenes to be able to set up the system and the um, infrastructure to be able um, to do this. But I, I'm confident that um, in 2022, we're going to be a stronger team and um, we'll be able to work on our policies and procedures that help support our staff um, and incentivize um, and, and help to grow the team, um, not only uh, hiring external um, staff, but also internally and continuing to offer, uh, offer the opportunity for, um, for growth and um, for retention. And Alyssa, in, in, you mentioned in your part of your response about attracting people, bringing new people into the agency. We are hearing all across, not this county, but country um, about the difficulty in terms of getting people into positions. And I, we've done we've done well, uh, and but we could always use obviously more individuals applying for positions in this agency, correct? Correct. And I wanna say we have about 13 position openings currently. Um, so, we're trying to get that out as much as possible. We're posting our positions on Facebook um, and we love it when people share. Um, so yeah, it's been a tight labor market. Um, and we're definitely doing our best to recruit staff um, amidst all of the other openings that are out there. So I wanna take us just in a couple of different directions before we close out this edition of ACAP today. And one is to note that we don't always coordinate our wardrobes quite this well. Um, we've chosen to for this edition of ACAP today because 2022 is significant uh, for all of the reasons why my colleagues have just mentioned, but it's also significant in that it's the 50th anniversary of uh, the beginning of the Aroostook County or Aroostook County Action Program when the then Central Aroostook Action Agency and the St. John Valley Action Council merged together to form ACAP. So it, community action has been in Aroostook County since the mid 60s, uh, but ACAP uh, as an entity has been here since 1972. And so the 50th anniversary is going to be uh, one that we're going to celebrate appropriately. We are an anti-poverty fighting agency and we're also in the midst of a pandemic, but it's an occasion that we wanted to mark and, um, and certainly hit the mark on. Before I go back to sort of Sherry and, and have her talk a little bit about, because she's met recently with her community development team about some of the things we might be looking forward to in 2022, I uh, want to ask the team members as you reflect um, sort of uh, on the opportunity to be part of an agency that has served this county for 50 years and a movement that has served this county for closer to 60 years in terms of community action. Um, what are your thoughts and your reflections um, as we sort of hit this milestone 50th anniversary? And Jamie Chandler, I'll begin with you. Sure. So um, one of the one of the things that um, I've learned in my in my very short time in comparison to ACAP's age uh, here at the agency is 
um, I've learned a lot about the roots of community action and, and, and why community action was created uh, in the first place. And really um, the way that, that in this, especially in this past year, our agency has been able to respond to the needs of the community and pivot, if you will, to, um, you know, change the way that we're providing the services to the individuals that we serve so that we're still able to provide that quality level of service is really what the fi finding fathers of community action intended it to be. And so um, I think that as I look at 50 years of, of our agency being here and what the next 50 years will look like, um, this is certainly, um, the the way that we are approaching our work today in a comprehensive way and really um, putting the customers first and really assessing what their needs are and putting their needs ahead of our own um, is indeed um, you know something that that I look forward to as we look into the next 50 years and in making sure that we we hold that tradition um, in service delivery as a community action agency. Wanda Osgood, one of the things that's really um, remarkable about your team is your team, yes, is the finance team, but your team is very mission driven and believes in the work that we do as do you. Um, what are your thoughts in this, this 50 year milestone as we head toward it and, and ready to meet it in terms of being part of this movement uh, that is community action and the fine work of this agency? So one thing that we often don't think about is that many people uh, some of us included, are just one big life event away from needing help. And so the fact that that we exist to be able to give somebody that little that little help that they need, the little hand up that they need to work themselves out of a, a tough situation, it makes me really proud to know that we can be here for our community in order to do that. And and I don't know how many times I've heard I've I've gotten help. And if I hadn't been able to get that help, I'm not sure where I would be today. So it just it it kind of gives you a little warm feeling to know that we can do that for people. And speaking of people, Alyssa Levac, we, we frequently talk about the fact that it's the people that we do this for, the, the reason why we're here, uh, and, and always put our, our customer in the center of the work that we do. But it's the people who work with those individuals and who deliver the services every day that make it happen. Uh, your thoughts about being part of, of the legacy of this agency and this organization as we look, you know, just last, last week or the week before, the guests on my program were uh, individuals, five of who, five individuals or four of the five individuals who have been serving this agency for more than 40 years. Um, your thought about that and the people of ACAP? Yeah, I, I, I'm going to say, um, in reflecting on what Jamie was talking about in the roots of community action, I think that probably this pandemic has kind of brought us back to that sort of mentality of, of serving people. Um, and we've worked really hard to break down the silos within our own organization. And I think that that is reflected in um, the way that our employees interact with each other and with our customers. And it's really exciting to hear about the cross collaborative work that they're doing. Um, it's been really difficult with COVID. You know, I, I know we're working to offer supports and um, just different resources for staff um, to get through this and recognizing that our staff are, are also um, like our customers going through difficult times and in need of assistance. Um, so, you know, reflecting on that and working toward trying to make, um, make life better for our employees as well. So I look forward to being a part of that um, and making the next 50 years just as great. All right. And so Sherry Locke, I'm, I've left the reflections on, on your thoughts about being part of an organization with such a fine legacy. Uh, the last thoughts on that question to you and, and have you segue from that into uh, a little preview for folks of what ACAP's 50th anniversary might look like. Absolutely. So when I think of the last 50 years, I think of us being able to respond to the needs in our community. And I think the last year has really demonstrated that 
We've been in a great place to be able to meet those needs, um, but to work with the community to really identify what those needs are and the best way for us to approach that. And I think that's what makes community action a little different is it is including the voice of the customers that you serve and again, putting them in the center and working with them to solve the challenges. So I just, I really love our mission of, you know, um, of, in the work that we do. Um, and I, to me, that 50 years is just a culmination of, of doing that differently um, as times have changed. I think uh, our 50th next year, 2022, is going to be really exciting. We're going to have the opportunity to look back on the history. And then we're also going to have the opportunity to celebrate where we are as a community and where we are as an agency. And that's really, really exciting. Um, we do have, um, again, we are in, still in pandemic mode, but we do have um, safe events that we're planning throughout all of Arista County. Again, um, we are um, an agency that is spread throughout Arista County. So looking at doing different events, safe events and events that will benefit our community throughout the year of 2022 and involving our community in our celebration because there have been hundreds of ACAP employees in this you know, 50 year span, thousands of customers, and how can we really make our success the success of all of Arista County? So um, lots of great things planned. Um, as Jason mentioned, we do have a community development committee, which is made up of ACAP board members and ACAP staff teaming together to do some of these events. So that's been um, really exciting as we start planning what that may look like. And again, I think we need to um, really take a look at and pay tribute to the history because this agency has done incredible things for the people of Arista County for the last five decades. So really, really exciting times. Indeed. And so my last question for all of you in this time when there's sort of still fear and anxiety uh, amongst us all is, is simply what are you most hopeful for as we're finding ourselves on the cusp of the new year in 2022? Jamie Chandler, what are you hopeful for? Well, I think anytime that you enter into a new year, it's an opportunity. And so um, for me, when I think about what, what's hopeful, it's, it's the opportunity that 2022 will bring to each, each and every one of us. And so um, that's something that, that gives me hope because it's um, 2022, it's a new year, um, perhaps, um, you know, new opportunities and, um, and, and opportunity for change. Wanda Osgood. I think I'm going to echo what, what Jamie said. I'm just, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to, um, you know, the growth of our, of our agency, the growth of our team, uh, and the ability for us to continue to help people in the way that we do so well. And, uh, you know, just meeting all of those needs. Um, and hopefully one day we'll find some normalcy again. Melissa Levac, what gives you hope these days? Uh, I guess that, you know, we, we learn from our mistakes and we grow and we, um, we just continue to improve. I think that we've done that. Um, you know, at, over the past few years that I've been employed with ACAP. So knowing that, you know, even as we're going through challenging times that that, that change has, has come. And um, when I look backwards, I see all of the positive things that have happened. So I know that when I look back year, backwards this time next year, I'll, I'll feel the same and that, you know, that even through it all, it will be like, it was worth it. And Sherry Locke. I think my uh, feeling right now, Jason, is more just thankful. Thankful for our entire ACAP team, over 200 strong countywide, and thankful that the community has trusted us as that partner for, again, 50 years um, and reaching out and really trusting us um, with their families and their households and how we can come in and um, help them with their challenges. So for me, that's just the, the best feeling to know that we can be making that impact still 50 years later, still making that impact um, for individuals and families and young children and the seniors in our community um, as that trusted partner. So it's, it's a really good um, feeling ending this year really strong and really looking forward um, to what's next. And I will say that I, in addition to being hopeful that the four of you will put up with me for another year, because you're really a rock star team, quite frankly, and I love working with you every day, and you're part of the reason why I love coming into work every day. Uh, I'm hopeful that our community will be in a better place, and I'm not only hopeful of that, I'm certain of it because, as Sherry mentioned, the 200 plus team members that we have across Aroostook County who will uh, come whatever comes uh, here in Aroostook County will always be working to make life better. Here in Aroostook County, we've been doing it for 50 years. 
and we'll keep doing it heading into the next 50. And so I'm excited about those opportunities and hopeful about those opportunities and feel like 2022 is going to be a better year. It has to be, right? Um, so uh, thank you all. Thank you to the four of you for, for joining us. Before we let all of you go, uh, just a reminder, as we usually do at this point in the program, uh, that if you would like to join our team, and Alyssa would like that very much, as uh, she pointed out, we have 13 openings uh, at this time. Well, some of those are listed here on your screen. They are across Aroostook County. So if you have an interest in any of these positions and think you have the the credentials and uh, what it has to, to do this work, and most importantly, the heart and the soul to do this work. Uh, we'd love to get your application. Check us out online, check these positions out online, uh, and you can read about what it requires, what they require, and what each of the jobs do. So we'd love to have you consider joining our ACAP team. Some of the wonderful benefits our agency offers are listed there on your screen. And again, lastly, as we do uh, each week uh, during the broadcast, uh, our snapshot of the week uh, takes us actually south uh, to the uh, National Head Start uh, Association Parent and Family Engagement Conference, where two members of our team that you can see there from left to right as I'm looking at them, uh, Jeannie Fox and Amy Murchison, uh, both of whom I think presented, Jamie, am I correct about that? They actually presented on some of our fine work uh, here at the agency. Tell folks a little bit about what they generally presented about. Sure, yeah. So uh, Amy and Jeannie uh, were asked by the association to present on our whole family work and the coaching work that we do. So um, just a wonderful opportunity for uh, us to share the, the comprehensive and, and the um, whole family's work that we're doing here with our peers across the country. Awesome. Great work and thank you and congratulations to Amy and Jeannie. Uh, quite the honor to be asked to present at a conference of that stature. At this point in the program, I just want to take a moment on behalf of our entire ACAP team and my leadership team uh, joining me in this broadcast to wish all of you a very happy holiday season. Um, we take it to heart what we do and we uh, enjoy serving the people of Aroostook County. Um, but you are a special people and we are pleased to have uh, individuals in our community who do good every day right alongside our team, whether they're part of the ACAP team or just members of the community doing good. And so as we enter into this holiday season, our thanks to you and wishing you all the best for a happy new year. We'll be back next week with another edition of ACAP Today where we'll actually focus on the new year and looking at uh, some things that you can do to live a healthier, happier 2022. Until then, have a great week, everyone, and a very blessed holiday season. See you later.